What's up, people? Welcome to the video and welcome back, members of the Tang Gang. I'm Tangy Nacho, and today we are starting up a new series that I am incredibly excited to share with you guys. So a while back, I started a little thought experiment where I asked myself the question, what if the seven continents of the real world were Pokemon regions? With each new generation of Pokemon games, a new region is introduced for us to explore, and this region is always based on an area within the real world, such as the latest region, Galar, being based in the UK. Along with these regions, we get a ton of new Pokemon, and those Pokemon are also based on creatures or concepts from the real world, such as Scorbunny, who is based on a rabbit. But, Pokemon introduced along with a certain region do not necessarily have to be based on a creature that lives in the real world area that the region is based on. In other words, Pokemon from Galar don't necessarily have to be based on animals from the UK. In fact, this is not the case for most Pokemon. I decided to imagine that the world's seven continents were Pokemon regions. The seven continents are of course North and South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. And so I went through all 890 currently existing Pokemon, researched their origins, and determined which of the seven continents each of them would call home. There are eight Pokemon regions, four based in Japan, two in the US with one in New York and one in Hawaii, and two in Europe with one in France and one in the UK. So only three continents are actually represented in the Pokemon world. But after going through and sorting them all into the real world continents, Every single continent has at least one Pokemon from every single region in the games, except for Australia which doesn't have any Pokemon from Generation 8. I found this incredibly fascinating, and through the entire process I learned so much about the origins of different Pokemon as well as real world creatures that honestly made me appreciate them a lot more. I cannot wait to get into the details here, but first I should explain my process for deciding which of the seven continents a specific Pokemon would be from. First off, I got all the information about the origins of the Pokemon from Bulbapedia, which is an amazing resource for all things Pokemon, and I am so thankful to everyone who contributes to that site because this would not have been possible without it. As far as the research and information on real world animals and whatnot, all of that was found on Wikipedia or other web pages from universities or organizations that had already done research on these things. I don't claim any of this research discussed in the video to be my own in any way, and again I am thankful for all those people out there that are smarter than me figuring all this stuff out. Now back to the Pokemon, when placing them on a continent I grouped Pokemon by their evolutionary lines. This was not only to save some time but also in the majority of cases the Pokemon in a line were based on the same thing anyway. If there was a difference, I tried to include the origins of both, but put more weight on the origin of the final evolutions. This was so that the Pokemon with split evolutions could have their multiple final forms end up on different continents and not be tied down by their shared first form. I understand that this brings in a bit of subjectivity, but once we get into it I think you'll agree that this is the way that makes the most sense. The real subjective part though is when a Pokemon has multiple different inspirations and could potentially be from multiple different continents. Rather than just putting Pokemon on every continent they appear in, I wanted to determine each Pokemon's one native continent. In the games, Pokemon can appear in multiple regions, with Pokemon like Zubat, Psyduck, and Magnemite appearing in literally every single one except for Gen 8. But every Pokemon has a native region, the first region they were ever appearing in, and this is often very important to the Pokemon's identity and how players feel about it. So I wanted to do the same thing with our real world continents. Pokemon should have one specific continent that they are native to. And so, for tiebreakers, I would either use the continent that is represented by the majority of the different origins, use the origin of pre-evolved forms, or make a judgment call on which origin I felt was the most compelling. This did not happen very often at all, but I will make it clear when it did. Alright, sorry for the incredibly long intro, but I hope you now have a good understanding of how this whole thing is going to work. That being said, there is no way I could cram all 890 Pokemon into one video. I would never put myself or you guys through that. So I will be breaking it up into parts and going through each continent one at a time, starting with Asia since it has the most Pokemon at 259. That is a crap load of Pokemon, so I will most likely be breaking it up into multiple videos itself, and same with the other continents that have similarly high numbers. I'll be listing the Pokemon in National Pokedex order based on the first form in their line to be introduced, and giving a short explanation for each one. Whew. Okay, it's finally time. Without further ado, let's get started with the Pokemon that would live in the continent of Asia. 
Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise. Their depictions as turtles are quite generic, but Squirtle and especially Wartortle resemble the Minogame from Japanese legend, a turtle with a seaweed tail. Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill. Beedrill has B in its name, but more closely resembles the Asian giant wasp, which of course is found in Asia. Sandshrew and Sandslash. The only living family of pangolin, which Sandslash is based off of, consists of four species which all call Asia their home. Vulpix and Ninetales. A pretty obvious one if you ever watch Naruto, Ninetales is based on the kitsune of Japanese legend, which is a fox with nine tails that can breathe fire. Oddish, Gloom, and Vileplume. Like Venusaur, the plant on Vileplume's head is a Rafflesia arnaldi, which is found in the rainforests of Sumatra in Southeast Asia. Paris and Parasect. The Tochukaso fungus on these Pokemon is used in many traditional Chinese medicines. Meowth and Persian. Persian closely resembles a Siamese cat, which you can guess comes from Siam in Asia. Growlithe and Arcanine. These Pokemon are based on Komainu, which are lion dog statues that guard the entrance of many Japanese Shinto shrines. Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam. Excluding Abra, the Pokemon in this line are Spoonbenders, or magicians that bend spoon with psychic powers. The most famous Spoonbender was Yuri Geller, who is an Israeli illusionist. Farfetched. Farfetched has to go in Asia because its concept is based on the Japanese saying, Kamoga negi wo shotokuru. Excuse my, uh, horrible Japanese. But this literally translates to a duck comes bearing green onions. Voltorb and Electrode. Seeing as these two are based off Pokeballs and not real world objects, it makes sense to say that they were from Japan because Pokemon was invented in Japan. Execute and Exeggutor. While it's true that Exeggutor is a palm tree, more specifically its inspiration comes from the Japanese monster Jinmenju, a tree that grows smiling human heads. Cubone and Marowak. Bulbapedia just says they're based on bipedal dinosaurs, and since they're fairly small, I figured they might take after Velociraptors. The first Velociraptor fossil was found in the Mongolian Gobi Desert in 1923. Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee's Japanese name hints at it being a likeness of Japanese kickboxer Tadashi Sawamura, and its English name is a nod at Bruce Lee, both being of Asian descent. Hitmonchan. Similar to its counterpart, Hitmonchan may represent Japanese boxer Hiroyuki Ibihara, or Jackie Chan as its English name suggests. Goldeen and Sea King. They aren't just any goldfish, but are Ronda goldfish, which originated in China and were mistakenly thought to be from the Netherlands when they were imported into Japan. Staryu and Starmie. Starfish are found in every ocean on Earth, so to narrow it down more, we can look at Starmie's resemblance to the Star of Ishar. This is the eight-pointed symbol of the Sumerian goddess, Inanna, and Sumer was located in modern-day Iran. Smoochum and Jinx. As most fans know because of the controversy surrounding the Pokemon, Jinx is based on the Japanese yokai, Yamauba, which is described as literally Jinx. You can read the description from Bulbapedia here if you don't believe me. Smoochum represents the legend of Kintaro, a human child raised by Yamauba. Elekid, Electabuzz, and Electivire. Another group of mons based on Asian folklore, Electabuzz is a representation of the Japanese Oni, which was an ogre that wore tiger skin and had lightning powers. And Electivire is based on the Yeti, which is a cryptid said to have lived in the Himalayas. Magby, Magmar, and Magmortar. Keeping with the theme, Magmar is based on Karura, a bird-like, fire-breathing creature in Japanese and Hindu mythology. Magmortar is one of those with cannon arms. Pincer. Stag beetles are apparently common pets in Japan, and Pinsir resembles the Lucanus maculife maratus, which is frequently used for beetle fighting. Magikarp and Gyarados. Really obvious one, Gyarados is based on a Chinese dragon and Magikarp on an Asian carp. Kabuto and Kabutops. Kabutops is based on the ancient version of the modern day horseshoe crab, which Kabuto is based on. Horseshoe crabs have four living species, three of which live in Asian waters. Munchlax and Snorlax. Bulbapedia just says it's based on hibernating bears, but I think the type of bear it resembles most is the panda, which are commonly found in Asia. Articuno. It seems to be based on the Iranian mythical bird, Simurg, whose habitat includes plenty of water for it to purify. Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. This line as a whole is inspired by Japanese sea dragons, despite the fact that they aren't water type. Whooper and Quagsire. Based on the giant salamander, which is found mostly in China and Japan. Espeon. This evolution is based on the legend of the Bakaneko and the Nekomata, both yokai depicted as mysterious, intelligent, fork-tailed goblin cats. Why not and Wabafet. 
These two are based on the Japanese Okiagare Kaboshi doll, which always stands back upright when pushed over. Pineco and Foratris. Bagworms are found all over the place, but Foratris appears to be inhabiting the shell of a walnut. The most common species of walnut is the English walnut, also called the Persian walnut because it originated in Iran. Dunsparce. Probably based on the Japanese Suchi Noko, literally translating to Child of Dirt, which is a snake-like being with venomous fangs. Remind me again why Dunsparce isn't ground poison type? Gligar and Gliscor. They have origins in vampires, gargoyles, and scorpions, but are most likely based on the ancient scorpion fly, the oldest fossils of which were found in Inner Mongolia. Heracross. While the Japanese rhinoceros beetle is not blue, more of a brownish red, it almost definitely is the insect that Heracross is based on. Sneasel and Weavile. These icy weasels take inspiration from the Japanese yokai Kamaitachi, which is said to cut people with large, sickle-like nails on both their hands. Raiko. Based on the Japanese Raiju, a creature in Japanese mythology whose body is made of lightning and takes the form of a wolf. Entei. Heavily resembles classic Chinese guardian lions, which are ornaments typically made of stone, displayed before a place of importance in order to grant protection. Suicune. Based on the Kilin, or Kirin in Japanese, which is a mythological chimera said to appear with the imminent arrival or passing of a sage or illustrious ruler. This sort of makes sense with Suicune appearing after the brass tower was burned to the ground. Celebi. Aside from being a typical fairy-like creature, yet not fairy type, Celebi is often thought to be a symbolic representation of the Shinto religion, an East Asian religion that has a major focus on nature. And I think this is probably a good place to cut it off for the first episode. We weren't able to get through too many Pokemon in this one because of the whole intro taking up so much time, but in the next episode we will definitely be able to get through the majority of Asia. Thank you so much for watching all the way through, I really do appreciate it, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to slap that like button for me, it really does help me out and let me know you're enjoying the content. Which Pokemon's origin from this episode did you think was the most interesting? Let me know down in the comments. What do you think of the series? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you like the way I'm doing things? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments, and if you're excited for the next episode, make sure you subscribe to join the Tang Gang and hit the bell icon so you can be notified when the next episode goes live. If you're watching this and the next episode is already uploaded, there should be a link on the screen right now to take you right over there. You can also check out some of my other content, although it's been a while since I uploaded and my content used to be about Overwatch. I still do want to make some Overwatch content, but I want to broaden my horizons a little bit and especially move into Pokemon and other games that I play. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I love you guys so much, and until we meet again, later people!